The human brain is one of the most studied subjects in science, but still much is a mystery, including the interplay between the brain and other organs, like the eye. At the UC San Diego Stem Cell Program, researchers are growing tiny brains from stem cells in order to further their understanding. And they're not the only ones using this approach. In order to get the complete picture of how the brain develops, we need to understand what happens when the brain receives and processes sensory information from other organs such as the eye. And that's where Carl Walling comes in. The connection between the eye and the brain has fascinated scientists for hundreds of years. It seems miraculous that rays of light can be transformed into a complex understanding of the world. But sometimes, the system breaks down leaving people in the dark. Photoreceptors or ganglion cells can die. And once those cells are gone, those cells are gone permanently. And so we're looking at new ways to restore function to the eye. Carl Wallen is the director of the Richard C. Atkinson Laboratory for Regenerative Ophthalmology at UC San Diego. His lab uses stem cells to create tiny human retinas in order to study eye disease. And hopefully one day, cure blindness. One of the powerful things that we can do with retinal organoids is to introduce patient-specific mutations. And this is something that's been made possible over the past five years by new gene editing techniques. Wallen's lab uses the CRISPR gene editing technique to create retinas with the exact mutations found in people with eye disease, so he can study how they develop and what treatments might work on each mutation. Previously, most of the studies that we would do to study inherited retinal degenerations would be done in animal models, which take a long time to develop, and they're not very scalable. The ability to make human organoids with disease-relevant mutations means that we can have many mutations, we can have thousands of samples, and we can test many of these with different drugs. You just simply can't do this with living animals in the same scale. He's teaming up with the Mwatri lab, which builds brain organoids, to study how the brain and the eye influence each other during development. But we know from decades of research in other species that sensory input is very important for brain development and vice versa. The information that we can get from this kind of approach, the cerebral organoid retina co-culture system, will allow us to understand how those connections are made. There are diseases such as Leber congenital amaurosis in which photoreceptors die at a very early stage. So this is childhood onset. It's not clear what happens to the brain connections once those photoreceptors are lost at a very early stage. So if we're able to cure blindness, this is gonna require knowledge of photoreceptor protection, as well as to understand how those connections in the brain could potentially be perturbed. So over time, as we've developed this uh, cerebral organoid retina co-culture system, we've recognized certain technical limitations. And one of them is that the retinas and the brains they tend to be absorbed by one another. And so we need physical structures in order to separate them. Xiao Chen Chen's uh, group has a lot of experience developing biocompatible materials. So they've been building three-dimensional scaffold systems for us to separate, physically separate the retinas and the brains. And this is gonna be one of the critical components that we use in order to build a better integrated brain retina circuit. At the same time, Wallen's lab is looking into a treatment for eye disease straight out of the animal kingdom. There's a new area in retinal research and it's a very fascinating area. It's called endogenous regeneration. And this is the process whereby specific support cells in the eye can be reconverted into other retinal neurons such as photoreceptors or ganglion cells. When you think about endogenous regeneration, uh, probably the most powerful example is a lizard or an amphibian that has lost its tail. A lizard that loses its tail can grow a completely new tail in a relatively short period of time. In the eye, there's a similar situation. Some types of fish, such as zebrafish, have been shown to regenerate an entirely new eye once when lost. In mammals, we seem to have lost this capability, at least naturally, to do this. There is recent literature that suggests that this can actually happen if given the right instructions. And so our lab is very interested in taking knowledge from other species 
using this in our system in order to endogenously regenerate retinal neurons. In 10 years from now, what I really hope we'll be able to accomplish with this system that we're developing is a platform to test new therapies. There are hundreds of mutations which need to be addressed, and we can't do this on a case-by-case -case basis. If we can have a system where we can study many different mutations in a system that's physiologically relevant, coupled to a brain, we would have a system where we can test new therapies like drug discovery or gene therapies, or in the best case scenario, endogenous regeneration. And if it did work to cure hundreds of mutations, uh, this would be something that would be extremely powerful and would transform the way medicine works. Carl's work shows us the potential of stem cells for not only restoring vision, but also for understanding how our eyes and brain work together. Next, we visit with a bioengineer who is helping to advance this work. Measure twice, cut once, the old adage goes. An inch here or there can make a huge difference in a construction project. But when it comes to building a human body, those measurements go from inches to microns, one millionth of a meter. Scientists at the UC San Diego Stem Cell Program are working at a scale that small to answer some of life's biggest questions. Our mission to understand brain development requires us to study the connection between the brain and the eye. Bioengineer Xiao Chen Chen is helping us thanks to his work connecting damaged spinal cords. The human body is a massive network. Signals traveling along neural pathways, allowing us to see, smell, hear and move. But what happens when those connections are severed? Can they be repaired? Or are they lost forever? For the case of spinal cord, imagine we can use this kind of 3D printed live tissue for that patient and uh, they can get recovered within a couple of months and walk again. Xiao Chen Chen is the founding director of the Biomaterials and Tissue Engineering Center at UC San Diego. His lab creates functional biological tissue using stem cells and a complex 3D printing process. In bioprinting, we print cells with gel, and then we build a functional biologically active materials. So in the case of heart, when you, you print this tissue, uh, it, it can beat. It's not just a plastic model. We have been working on this topic for the last almost 20 years. We start from scratch and we build our own printing machines. Those machines shine light into a gel full of stem cells using patterns derived from CT scans to match liver, heart, and nerve tissue. Any spot the light hits becomes solid. These cells are from patients' own skin, so you can take these cells and reprogram them into functional cells like heart cell, liver cell, nerve cells. And then we can print these cells into the structure, and in that case, the piece is the patient-specific. And you can put it back into the patient, hopefully it will help to grow the heart, repair the livers, and also regrow the nerve tissue. Chin's lab has already found success repairing severe spinal cord injuries in rats. Now Chin's partnering with Allison Watry and Carl Wallen to help them understand how brain and eye development influence each other. He's devised a way to keep the tiny brains and retinas they're studying separate, just like they are in the womb. It's a very exciting uh, opportunity for us to work together with Allison's lab and uh, Carl's lab. All three of us are maximizing our strengths to build this complex organoid system that has the retina in one end and a brain on the other end. Then there's a channel with the biomaterial that we studied over the years to bridge these two together in a very precise fashion. That channel allows the brain and retinal organoids to form connections, so researchers can see how those connections influence brain development. And the Matri Lab is also hoping to use Chen's bioprinting techniques to create tiny blood vessels, allowing brain organoids to become larger and more complex. In our case, we use a light and uh, it can really focus the light into a tiny, tiny spot or, or patterns, and then we can recreate this very fine vasculature network. And bioprinting has other revolutionary possibilities. 
from speeding up drug testing. It takes average 12 years and $2 billion for one drug. Now, since we can print these human tissue, they can directly test whether this drug will be toxic or whether this drug will be effective or not in the situation of the human tissue. To perhaps one day patching the human heart. Imagine yourself in the future that we can create this functional human tissue that can be used as a patch to put on the patient and repair the heart damage and the heart go back to normal. And that's, I think that's very exciting for me and I'm, I'm so excited you know, to be involved in this kind of um, research work. It is clear that bioengineering would be an important part of any future use of stem cells to fix damaged tissues and cure conditions. Another method to discover cures is to find the pathways within cells that cause conditions to start and find ways to stop them. Brain organoids allow us to do that. We'll be exploring this more on Building the Brain.